Good morning. Hope I find you well. Today, I want to look at developing new business system, a new business system. There are three ways which you can use to develop a new system. But before we do that, let's look at what this gentleman said. He said computers add value only if surrounded by appropriate policy strategy, methods for monitoring results, talented and committed people, talented and committed people, sound relationships, and the well-designed information systems. Well-designed information. This is now our app. How do we design an information system? And I said there are three methods which you want to look at. You can also read more about it and find out more methods. But let's look at these three and try and compare them. All right, the first one, developing an e-business system. The diagram itself shows you that there are two groups of people, very important people, IT professionals and business stakeholders. The business stakeholders are the users of the new system. Right? The starting point, as you can see on the diagram, it says strategy, but you don't develop a strategy without a problem. So the starting point should be identifying a problem before you come on to the strategies, because the whole idea of developing a new system is resolving that problem which you have identified, which requires a new system. Right? So if you look at this, Strategy, that's the plan. We'll look at details of these stages. Then the evaluation is the next stage. Development, implementation, next stage. Post-implementation review, and then operations. These are the stages. I want you to observe these stages as we go on to the next method and the last method. All right? And just compare. There are similarities. Now, let's look at this one. You also read on this, start this diagram and see what the IT, ICT personnel or professionals do and what the stakeholders or the users do in order to come up with a working e-business solution or a system. All right? So let's look at each stage and see what happens. The strategic phase. What is this? This is the formulation of a strategic plan. Successful planning really depends on teamwork. What I would say, teamwork is the team of ITC professionals and the users, the business professionals. Right. This is very important. Developing that system, the relationship is very important. Collaboration is very important. Why? Because at the end of the day, these Two groups of people must be proud of the system and they say, this is our system. This is our system. That is very important. What is the next stage? After formulating the plan, we go on and evaluate the phase. What are we saying in the evaluation of the phase? We are looking at the qualitative, quantitative techniques. Right? But what are we saying in general? What we are saying in general, we are looking at the costs the benefits and so on. It's the feasibility that is it feasible to carry out this project or building up this new system? Is it feasible? Indeed, it must be feasible. Then if you if you are convinced that this is feasible, then you go on to the next stage. Prototype. Just select a small section or a department, which is easier to understand which has got simple functions, then you prototype it. Prototyping, you are just developing a small, a small system or a model, which will then expand to the other departments. Right. So that's the prototyping. Once you are satisfied, the prototyping, you are also you are developing that system so that you've got the user giving their input, the ICT is resolving any problems or errors or any queries which arise. Right. That prototype. Then the development phase. What are we saying in the development phase? The ITC professional, the analyst, 
the programmer, the hardware specialist, and so on. They come in and try and develop a system. But how do they develop a system? They develop a system looking at the requirements of business stakeholders. That is very important. Business, because they are developing this system for the business stakeholders or for the users hmm? who then determine the stability of that system. See so that prototype phase. Then developing a document, you are still at the prototype, isn't it? You, you are now developing programs. It's the programmers which now come in. They come up with the flow diagrams of how the system works. They also come up with the documentation of what that system looks like, how that system works. And the users also say, yes, we have a problem here, and then correct it. All right. So from there, let's try and implement it, and you see how the phase goes up, how the prototype goes, goes up. You test that, and the users also have some inputs, and they will say, right, this is correct. This is not what we want. Okay? The ICT are there just to save you, to look at your requirements and say, right, is this the correct thing? If this is the correct thing, then that's fine, all right? Then you go, go on to the post-implementation review. If the post-implementation review, quite interesting, post-implementation review, you are now reviewing what is in place and say, this is our system and say, we want to correct this, we want that one done, we want that one done as well. Right. The operational phase. Yes, we are now operating. And see whether the system works. If it works, fair and fine. That's very important. But again, this is just a prototype. And you want to see it working. Is it operating? Yes, it's operating. Then you are satisfied. If there are corrections, or anything to be correct, then that should be correct. What needs to be upgraded, you also upgrade that. All right. Testing and maintaining the system. You test it. Give maintenance. If it is done by the outsiders, then what you want to do is to have a contract and a maintenance contract. Right? You might also want to have your people trained so that they take over the system, they take over the maintenance, and so on. Right. Okay. Right. That's one system. Right. The other system, which you can bring in, is the, the waterfall model. If you go on on the internet, this is very interesting because we've got so many, so many diagrams depicting different stages. But if you have a close look at those different stages or phases, they are very similar. Some of them are combined. Some of them are just separated in a way, but so that you might have nine, eight stages, but coming on to the same thing. I also want you to compare this with the first diagram. What's the difference? Requirements. We said feasibility study. This is where you get the requirements of the users. Design. We've talked about design and, and the development. Implementation, implement. Verification, you're just saying, is this the correct thing and can we correct it? And then the maintenance, that's the last step. The system has got to be maintained, no matter how good it is. Okay. That's the waterfall. I don't have to go through those stages because we have already looked at them. Now, let's look at advantages. What are the benefits of this model? But before we do that, I want to also to look at the advantages of the first method. Are there advantages? Are they challenges of the first model before we come on to this one? And you can also compare the first method with this one and see which one you can choose, which is suitable for your, for your organization. All right. 
from the diagram, it's quite simple. The model, the model is simple and easy to follow and to understand. It is easy to manage. Why? Because the stages are quite rigid, rigid and quite specific. In this model, phases are processed and completed. They don't overlap. If you have a problem at one stage, then you've got to go back and make some corrections at whatever stage those corrections were required. Right? It works very well with small projects. Very well with small projects. Right? What, are the other, what, are, what are the disadvantages of this one? What are the challenges? If it works with very small projects, if the stages are quite rigid. So what are the problems? Once they have reached the testing stage or the verification stage, it is very difficult to go back. We are not saying it's not possible. It's very possible to go back, but it's difficult. Time wasting, resource wasting. Not work, no working software is produced. Look at the development. Once they have developed that, that's where you are starting to work out the software. There's a high amount of risk and uncertainty. Why? Because if you don't assess your risks and problems and uncertainties and resolve them as you go on, then you've got a problem. You might end up with a system which is not working. It's not a good model for complex or long-term system, system development. It's a poor model for long and ongoing projects. Not suitable for projects where requirements are constantly changing, where the risks are quite high. Why? Because you don't assess those risks as they are implemented. So it's not a good model anyway, but it's quite a useful model if you are using it for a small, small projects. When do you want to use it? The model is only used when the requirements are very well known, clear and fixed. When the product definition is stable, doesn't change. Technology is well understood. Then you have no problem. The requirements are quite clear. Not ambiguous. Embo resources with the required expertise. Do you have that? If you have that, then you have no problem. And the project must be quite short. Then you can use this model. Right. Once you've done that, then that's okay. The third one, spiral model. Spiral model, you are now starting from the bottom from the ground and they're going through the steps maybe to the first floor, third floor and fifth floor using the steps, the spiral steps. So in other words, you are going round, round, but at the same time you are going up to get a solution right at the top. Right. If the solution is at the fourth floor, then that's it. You get it at the fourth floor. But in the process, you've got to go through the process, the spiral process. What does it mean? There are four stages which are identified there. Right? Determining the objectives. Why do you determine the objectives? Because you've got a problem right at the end, at the center of that spiral. There is a problem where you develop the concept. Then you go on, identify and resolve risks, which is not done by the waterfall model. Identify and resolve the risks. Develop and test, that's three. Development and testing. Plan the next iteration. Look at the prototypes. We have one, two, three prototypes. They can go on to four, five. Prototypes, right. And those prototypes means you are making some changes. Right. Let's get into detail of this method or model. First step, determine objectives. Objective to do what? To solve the problem which you've already identified. So you must have the objectives, which are aimed at resolving your problem. All right. Once you've done that, 
think that's fine. You are now clear on the claim. Then if you've got those objects, then you've got, to ask, you've got to ask yourself questions. Are there no problems? Identify the problem, identify the risks, identify the uncertainties, and then try and resolve them before you go on. That's the beauty of this model, right? Once you've done that, then you go on, go on to the prototype. We've already explained what the prototype is. Right? You go on to the prototype, select a small one, and they go on, right? And they develop that prototype. Mm -hmm. You want to develop that prototype, and the users are making their inputs. Right? They are making their inputs. And the users must feel that they are part of this project. Don't cut them off. The business stakeholders are very important. The ICT, the relationship between those two guys, those two groups, very important. ICT and the business stakeholders who are the users. All right. So the prototype is there. If the prototype is there and it's up and running, then what you are, what are you saying? You want to extract, transform, and load. Trust, extract what? Data. Transform what? Data. And then load it into the database. Hmm? What are we saying here? Let's look at this next time. We are saying we've got this department, A, B, C. So you are taking data from different departments or different units, all right? You are then extracting and transforming that data as it is understood by the organization. Right? The terms used must be the same used in each department and understood to mean the same in every department. And then from there, you come up with a data warehouse, your organization, or for that prototype. Okay. Designing and the recommended, the recommended system. Now you've got the recommended system from your prototype. Design it. Right? Let's design that system. What are we saying on the design? We've already talked about design. Hmm? You are designed, giving up the flow diagram. Now you know how your system looks like. Hmm? Data entry procedures, the main users, designs are effective input of the system using the techniques, good forms of techniques. User interface, these are the menus. These are the design, this is the design you are talking about here. The screen, how does it show? How is it printed? And things like that, all right? Developing and testing that the software. You are developing the software, you are then testing the software and see whether it is okay. But again, let me emphasize that the ICT and the business stakeholders or the users must work very closely. They must be a collaboration, a strong collaboration between the two groups. All right. Developing a documentation, all right? If you are developing the program, these are the programmers who are developing the program. If they are developing the programs, they are giving the source codes. If this is done by an outsider, then it's important for you to ask you what we call the source code or the documentation, the procedure manuals. This is important. In case of problem, then you know where they pro how to resolve those problems. Don't let them go without that. If you do that, then you always rely on them and you go on wasting money. All right? Testing and maintenance of the system. You test it, maintain it. We've already covered that. All right? Implementation and evaluation. You are now taking the whole organization. Let's say you are now taking the whole organization. Then you are implementing and then you are evaluating. We've already looked at that. Implementation, evaluation. Right. Implementation, post implementation review. This is the evaluation we're talking about. We talked about it earlier. Right. What are the advantages of this model? What are the advantages? I'm sure you can write something from what we've already said. What are the advantages? It, it has got a range of options that accommodates good features of a good system. 
in the software model itself. Because it constantly changed, constantly attend to the risks. Hmm? It's risk driven. You are solving uncertainties. You are solving problems as you go on. By the end of the day, let's say you have minimized the problem. You know, you resolve the problem, which is a beauty. Hmm? Provides guidance in the best mix of existing approaches. Why not? Because you are just moving in a spiral way as you go up to get a solution. Application can provide can provide the risk-driven mix everywhere already said. Look at the prototyping and the evolution which goes with it. The development which goes with it as you move spiral. To also focus on tension on options involving the reuse, the reuse, the reuse of existing software. Why? Because they've already developed the software in the first prototype, the initial prototype. Right? That's the existing. You still use that one and improve it. It accommodates preparation for life cycle evolution. Any changes, growth in the software development, you can always accommodate it. Why? Because this is your system, homegrown. It provides mechanism for incorporating software quality, objectives, yes, it does. It focuses on eliminating errors and uncertainty and unattractive alternatives very early. Yes. Why? Because you are removing the uncertainties. You are removing the problems when you are identifying the risks. Hmm? So there are so many advantages. It does not involve separate approaches, especially for software. It provides a viable framework for integrated hardware and software. Indeed, integrated software system for the whole organization, integrated hardware for the whole organization. And we've talked about integration and how you integrate that. Right. What are the challenges? There are quite many. So far, it looks quite beautiful. So far, it looks quite attractive. But there are problems you must be aware of. It only works well on internal software developments. Once you come up with the contract software, then you have a problem of marrying the two. Relying on risk assessment expertise. Do we have that expertise? You must have risk assessors, good risk assessors who can identify and give you a solution. Need for further elaboration of yes. Why? Because they are going spiral. So elaboration until the users are satisfied. Then that there is that need of elaboration. And there is also that need of collaboration, which can become a challenge. Yeah, some of the challenges and the suggested solutions. Personal short, soft, short forms. Identify your talent in the organization. Do the job match, team building, training, and so on. All right. So the solutions are there. If there are any short forms, unrealistic schedules and budgets, this should not be a problem. All right. Because in the process of design, you give some essence. Increment or development of use of, 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 of software that is catered for. So through those spiral means, those spiral process, this can be resolved. Developing the working software functions. Look at that. But you've got the prototype there. That's the solution. Any other problems, there's no problem. Concept formulation is also done as you are going on around, let's say, as you go up in the prototyping. So that's the solution. Developing the wrong user interface, but you are a good prototype. Right? You have good user characteristics. You know, that should not be a big problem. That's the solution that you can give if you face such a problem. Yeah, there are some, some of these problems you can always read and understand. Continue and stream or requirement changes. Yes, requirement changes must be there because we are talking of incremental development here. 
and we are also talking of prototype. Shortfalls in external, externally reformed tasks. Competitive design. Again, the team building can solve you that problem. Again, prototype. Look at the prototype and how it solves your problems as you go on. Right. There you are. Now, these are the three. And if you are asked which method would you apply in your organization, the answer is up to you. I've given you the three methods, and it's up to you to say these are the, this is the method and say why. Yes, there are these benefits and there are these problems. But at the same time, if you have a solution to the problems, then say so. Thank you very much.